Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Ray Tampa Podcast. Our podcast offers bold commentary on various subject matters with a laser-like focus on the truth. My name is Ray Tampa, and I'm the host of the Ray Tampa Podcast. We have in our studio Mr. Russell Cato, a retired educator with more than 40-plus years of experience in Pinellas County, and Mr. Jamie Wilson III, a healthcare provider with more than 25 years of experience as a physical therapist, my co-host, my awesome co-host. We're thoroughly pleased to have with us today, Mr. Brent Robinson, an experienced and highly talented mm -hmm. history teacher here in Pinellas County Schools. Mr. Robinson is going to share with us his knowledge, his insights, and opinions about Project 2025. <laughs> There's a lot to be said about the different components of Project 2025. Listeners, brace yourselves for an enlightening discussion of enormous importance. Mr. Robinson, welcome to the Ray Tampa podcast again. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, it you, is man. my privilege and my honor to be here. And listeners out there, I want to thank you all so much for your vigilance. Your vigilance and your commitment to our democracy, we all know it's at stake in November. And I hope that, you know, we'll make a commitment tonight that as we learn more about what Project 2025 is, we'll make that commitment to help educate other citizens as they, you know, prepare themselves for the voting booth. Excellent, excellent. And that's what we would like to see happen. Yes. Mr. Robinson, we want you to teach us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want you to teach us about Project 2025. Rather than us asking upfront questions, we want you to have the floor, right. so to speak, right. and proceed as you wish. So before I get started, I'd like you guys in the studio, uh, Mrs. Robinson, all of our listeners, guys, um, everybody always make sure you're nodding, even if you don't know something. Just pretend like you know it, okay? Because we're gonna get we're gonna get kind of deep. So thank you guys for doing that, and thank you guys at home. So, you know, the first thing I would say about Project 2025 is that it's a blueprint. It is a blueprint for how the President of the United States can take much more control over the federal government. And if you're already thinking, like some of you might be, about Donald Trump's joking about being a dictator on the first day, or if you maybe are like some of us here in the studio who know actually what fascism really is and have seen those characteristics in Donald Trump for years, we have right to be concerned about what Donald Trump and possibly uh, Project 2025 really represents. So it is a blueprint. Now, it was put together by the Heritage Foundation and over 100 other conservative right-wing organizations. The Heritage Foundation was created way back in 1973. It's a think tank of right-wing conservative scholars, academicians, policy experts, and the goal of the Heritage Foundation is to create policy so that lawmakers around the country, if they have an issue or a concern, they can easily replicate and translate those policy positions that the Heritage Foundation has, has created for them into laws, right, into legislation. So Blueprint 2025 is essentially, or Project 2025, this blueprint is essentially a 922-page manifesto or document that outlines the vision of what would happen if someone like Donald Trump became president. So it will be ready on day one. So I want to defer to you guys because before I tell you some of the details, like kind of any questions or comments or misconceptions that might be out there. Well, basically, I don't have any at this point because I'm in a learning mode. That's okay. A lot of times I come to the table, I've done a lot of research. I know basically what we're talking about. Okay, okay. But I haven't done that with Project 2025. Okay. So I'm in a learning mode. Well, we can, you know, I just want to pause after I give you guys, and, and you guys at home listening, you know, think about the kind of questions that you might have. And I want to make sure we take advantage of this opportunity. I didn't realize how old it was. I thought it was 
really on its conception during the Reagan, but you, you said as much. We were talking earlier, yeah. some of these ideas have been around for decades. Right. In fact, some of them were crafted into a position for incoming President Ronald Reagan way back in 1981. So, you know, many of us will know some of these ideas, but that they can all be packaged in one place. And then to have a president with the stated both vision and commitment and thought to possibly be a dictator, then here it is in one place, all in one package and one blueprint. And it sounds like a recipe yeah. for dic being a big yeah. dictator. It, it could that's be. What it sounds like. And I think that's what we want to make sure as we walk away, we can educate our fellow citizens about. So I would start with this. I would start with the fundamental foundational pillar of Project 2025. Okay, good. To understand that, guys, again, nod with me. We know, we know, that, we know that our democracy, we know that our, our nation is composed of three levels of government, right? We have local level, right? Towns, cities, counties. We have the state level and we have the federal level, right? Anything that happens at the federal level affects everyone in the nation. It's national, it's nationwide, it's federal. And we also know that each level of government is divided into three branches, right? Legislative, executive, judicial. Mm -hmm. So the president, of course, oversees the executive branch. And this is really important for you guys at home as listeners to conceptualize. The executive branch is in charge of enforcing and carrying out the nation's laws. Mm -hmm. So the people that work in the executive branch are people who work in our government. They're fellow citizens. And we have to understand, there are almost 3 million people that work in the federal government. Most of them work in the federal executive branch. Now, it starts to come together when you realize that there are 15 agencies within the federal executive branch, right? There's the Department of Agriculture, Department of Education, right? Department of Commerce. In those agencies are fellow citizens who are experts in their field. If you work in the Department of Agriculture, you're an expert on everything from crops to crop rotation to weather impact on crops. You have to be an expert. You're not hired because you're a Republican or a Democrat. You're not hired because you're loyal to a politician. You're hired because you're a policy expert and you're serving us, the people. And when another president comes along, you don't lose your job. You continue to work in that position and we appreciate your expertise all along the way. So if you all understand that, the fundamental pillar of Project 2025 would give the president the power to hire and fire people in the federal government, which means the president could hire and fire tens of thousands of people, fellow citizens, to work in our federal government, and, and they would be rehired if they expressed their loyalty to the president. I want to exactly. So guys, your answer. thoughts. So okay. listeners, think about that. Wait, I want to ask loyalty to the president. Okay. My question, of all these employees you just stated, millions of employees, thousands, whatever, they're broken into classes of employees because Correct. you have the career employees Correct. and they're not subject to the whims or they're not supposed to be subject to the whims of the president. Correct. Then the appointed employees are what you call uh, at will, at will employees. So I was just thinking, how is he going to come in and just wipe all these people out of their positions if they're not at will employees? There's a way. There's a way to change the hiring practices within the executive branch within the government. And he can threaten yeah. the supervisors who yeah. are at will employees. Yeah. If you don't get rid of Russ or Jamie, yeah. I'm going to get rid of you. I know it can be done. Right. But uh, they're supposed to be legal guardrails. Yes. Okay. I'll leave it at. Well, let me just say, I can feel the concern here in the studio once you can see the totality of this mm -hmm. and i can feel that out there among you listeners but remember this is the foundational plank of it let's it. add something else yes the department of justice yeah at the federal level currently the president does not have any control or authority over the justice department True. the president doesn't hire or fire the attorney general who is essentially the nation's top law enforcement official under Project 2025, the Justice Department would fall under the control of the president. So that means the president could hire and fire anyone he wanted in the Justice Department. And now we know with the Supreme Court ruling from three weeks ago, where essentially the Supreme Court has said that the president has immunity. Consider what a president like Donald Trump could do if he had control, knowing what he's already said about targeting people he's labeled as being enemies. Guys, I'm a history teacher. There's never been a president in our history 
that openly talked about yeah. fellow citizens as enemies. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, Don, and, and I'm glad that you're a history teacher. So was Ray too, I think. Yes. But but in, in teaching my kids, what people got to understand about the law, the law, L A W, and there's three parts to that: executive, Congress, Supreme Court. What Trump has done, if I can control the executive, because right now he got control of the Supreme Court now. Thank so you. we only need one Thank branch to control, mm -hmm. and that is Congress. Thank you. Right, you right on. Thank you. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. That's exactly right. He's manipulated constitutional powers mm -hmm. within the Constitution. You know what I heard him say the other day, Ray, and it just shocked the hell out of me. When those prison, prisoners were released the other day, you know who he graduated? Congratulated, Putin. Putin yeah. Ain't that something? It's more to come. You got to understand what's going on here. That's why I tell my people, you got to read this guy. This guy does have a plan to totally take over the Constitution through dictator means. That's what he is doing. Russell, thank okay. you so much for, for filling in that because the control of the legislative judicial, yes. it's, it's much more complete now with what we know has happened to the Supreme Court over the last several years. So, you know, if we pause and we say, but but there's more, right? Oh, sure. If we talk about education, you know, we, we should all know that most education decisions are made at the state level yeah. across the country, yeah. right? Our salaries, our curriculum standards, but the federal Department of Education is obviously essential to any president, regardless of how you view the scope and scale of the, mm -hmm. of the institution or the agency. We need a Department of Education to oversee how we're doing educationally in the country, to measure, yeah. Yeah. to have understanding of curriculum yeah. standards and different yeah. educational programs and things. Yeah. But what Trump would do is he would take the Department of Education, he would rename it the Department of American Values, and what would happen is that unlike today, in which the federal Department of Education doesn't really have much impact on the education of students across the country, mm. he would make sure it did because he would make sure he directed this new Department of American Values to very much impact the decisions at state at the state levels, which would mean you would have the infusion of things like Christian nationalism mm. into our education. We know, for example, that Louisiana just permitted by law, the governor just signed a law in Louisiana, that the Ten Commandments will now be posted in every classroom in the state. And Oklahoma, the superintendent of education, just passed a law that the Bible must be taught in schools. Now we're thinking, how do you teach the Bible in public schools, knowing we have the First Amendment separation of church and state? So what I'm saying is that we know that the foundation of Christian nationalism has already been laid. Mm -hmm. There are millions of Trump supporters who already believe in Christian nationalism. What Trump would do is turn the Department of Education at the federal level into a mandate, a pipeline that would make it very easy for states to quickly replicate yes. curriculum mm -hmm. having yes. to do with Christian nationalism. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have their other fundamental belief in American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism is a belief that America is only the greatest country in the world today, but it's the greatest country in the world that's ever been. And if you also believe <laughs> Christian nationalism, that America is a Christian nation, suddenly you have students being taught that in public mm -hmm. schools. And I, and I don't have to remind you of what we've all experienced here in the last few years with the need for us to teach our nation's history in its entirety. Mm -hmm. The takeover of the Department of Education would ensure that all the craziness we've been dealing with here in Florida, with teachers being accused of indoctrination and grooming and sexualizing students and all the allegations about critical race theory, those kinds of things become perpetrated and perpetuated at the federal level when you have a president like yeah. Trump yeah. who can use the federal Department of Education to do that. Well, I knew you would know. Yeah. I knew you would know yeah. about yeah. this 2025 project. Yeah. So we're gonna let you go on, share more with us. Well, I mean, there's another area I think that gives us all pause, immigration, right? Okay. We understand that there has been a need for comprehensive immigration reform in our country for decades. Right. But we also know how easy it is for political parties to use fear and disinformation to mislead citizens about the reality of immigration versus what they believe is happening. So there's tremendous disinformation about immigration. What the Trump administration would do under Project 2025 is first permit mass roundups of undocumented immigrants. You know, all that fear, all that talk 
of immigrants and the language of them and those people and the use of terms like invasion, that human beings are invading us, mm -hmm. right? We're supposed to be a nation of immigrants, right? Well, it would empower the federal government to round up undocumented immigrants. Now, we may have 11 or 12 million undocumented immigrants in our country right now. And if you like food being prepared, if you like fruits and vegetables being harvested, if you like houses being constructed, mm -hmm. those are three main major industries in our country that right. very much depend on undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. And that wink, wink, nod, nod is the reality of all Americans right now, mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican, independent, understanding that we know we've got a lot of undocumented immigrants providing essential employment mm -hmm. for the United States. And guess what? Mm -hmm. The fact is undocumented immigrants, their rates of crime are significantly lower yeah. than native born people. Right. And 99% of all the drugs brought across the southern border come in vehicles mm -hmm. coming through border checkpoints. Mm -hmm. They're not brought by some desperate human being who's going to walk 3,000 miles who wants to become an American because I want those people to be Americans if they're willing to sacrifice that much. But we have to understand that the Trump administration would not just allow mass roundups, but it would also end what's called birthright citizenship. Mm -hmm. Birthright citizenship means that just because you're here... You're born in this country. If your parents are undocumented, that doesn't mean that you're now suddenly an American citizen, right? So these laws would be deeply offensive, deeply bigoted, and would undermine everything we've been fighting for for over two centuries on the civil rights front. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And, and then again, he's only scratching the surface. Right. It's a lot. Right. It's a lot. Well, you, you you got to understand Trump and his and his his principle. If you can make people scared of something, talk fear, yeah. talk fear, yeah. talk fear. For instance, this immigration policy of Trump is called the replacement theory. You see what he's pushing? You allow these people to come in, you are going to lose out. Talking about white Americans. But Russ, you know, one of the themes that's come through in our conversation is that a lot of these ideas are not new, no, but we're, we're talking about some ideas. We're talking about the foundations of our nation yeah. and white supremacy. Yeah. Some of these yeah. ideas, replacement yeah. theory is not something new. Not All new. these strands of ideas that have been out there through the course of our lifetime, yeah. we have to understand that they've coalesced now in a movement of people who both believe their country has been taken from them, yeah. believe they're empowered yeah. to try and get it back. That's what yeah. make America great again. It's built on a foundation of disinformation and lies of people who believe their country's been taken from them, mm -hmm. people who believe there's a pandemic was a hoax, right? People who believe there's a deep state. These are fellow citizens who are grossly undereducated. And I say that with respect to those fellow yeah, human beings, yeah. but it's easy for people like Donald Trump to take advantage of. So all those strands that have been out there the course of our lifetime to bring them together in one place, a 922 page document mm -hmm. called Project 2025. And you know, Donald Trump was president already. Right. He understands what he needs to do to be a, quote, better president. And we know he would act on day one on many of these things in Project 2025, mm -hmm. if given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. The uneducated catapulted him. That's 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 how he got to be the uneducated. And back to what you were talking about education with a lot of the um, immigrants that are here doing the work. You're right, because the educated Americans are too good to do. It. At least they think they're too good to do the work. They are. But, you know, listening to all this and, and the bit I've read. It's, it is scary, like you said in the beginning, and it it's almost like a um, political revelations. You know how it is in the Bible? <laughs> yes, it's, sir. It's like the political well, revelations part. Well, it's crazy, man. Well, I think some of the images we might have in our minds are maybe as terrifying as the mm -hmm. book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does Project Twenty Twenty Five say about uh, same sex marriage? It says that any mention of LGBTQ plus yeah. essentially human beings would be removed. Now, again, there's 15 different agencies under the control of the federal executive branch. So any one of those agencies that would have anything remotely to do with people and how they should be treated, right, whether it be through the medical field or in housing or any other, anything related to discrimination or anything related to benefits, all these things, any mention over the years of making sure that we don't discriminate against people just because of who they love, mm -hmm. those would be removed. And that's mm -hmm. also included in 922 pages for sure. Mm -hmm. So just like those jobs that you were talking about, um, 
if he became, you know, he, the president would have the power in so many words to have like-minded people. So that would mean it would, to me, it would be a lot more um, Republicans than Democrats working because he could. <laughs> and what it would also mean is corruption. It's corrupt. Oh, because that. we've definitely. been here before. We had a period in our history in the late 19th century called the Gilded Age, right? Mm -hmm. The Gilded Age was the period of the Rockefellers and the Carnegies and the Vanderbilts, right. where there was this tremendous gap between the rich and the poor. So we've already experienced that, mm -hmm. right, where corruption held the day. So Project 2025, you get to hire whoever you want to. Mm -hmm. And what's to stop you from hiring somebody who is not qualified in their position, but their qualification is that they gave tremendous campaign contributions to any number of candidates that you approve of. And so you hire them. And if you have a Supreme Court that is very friendly to deregulation mm -hmm. and or will strike down existing laws protecting American workers, then we can see what the landscape might be like, not just for the people working in government, but by the citizens who are supposed to be governed by it. We'll lose a lot more rights, too, because I've already taken a lot right now from the women, you know, with abortion and all that stuff. But if you got the Christian national writing the laws, how on our, on our earlier shows, how they wrote mm -hmm. laws and getting stuff passed, and they, they got the money to do it. You know what I mean? I can see the government referring for them to write a lot of the stuff because they're all like minded mm -hmm. as far as political. Well, but we, we've seen we've seen. Oh, so go ahead, bro. Sorry about no, that. No, please, no. please. Well, you, you know, and, and I hate to say this on the show. We got some fall on licking the ass concept here. That's what we got here. Because he's been talking about well-educated people. You tell me J.D. Vance and all these boys, look how they come back to him. Mm -hmm. What is this? Nothing more than a licking ass concept. Mm -hmm. If we can sell this type of shit to these kind of people, we in big trouble. And, but the thing is, you know where it plays out. This is why the fear is so palpable. It plays out here at the local level. Yeah. But we've already seen this. All Americans have now seen images. They've seen video clips of angry scenes from school board meetings. Yeah. Yeah. We, My wife and I, we've been to dozens of school board meetings. I just spoke at the school board meeting this week. We know what it's like to be in a, a forum here where you live to see fellow citizens yelling mm -hmm. angry epithets yeah. at you, yeah. accusing people like you of doing things to their children. So we know what that fear is like at the local level. Well, of course, it's going to play out here. If Project 2025 comes to be, all those battles about Christian nationalism in our curriculum, those battles about what can and can't be taught – and what should and shouldn't be taught, they're going to be played out right here in front of us. And they're going to be nasty and they're going to be angry because we don't have yet enough voices of reason. You know, that's why we have to mm -hmm. get behind Kamala Harris, because what do you notice Kamala Harris is doing? Modeling joy, modeling optimism, mm -hmm. modeling hope, modeling empathy, right? Modeling a belief in the future of what happens when you bring people together and engage them in dialogue and discourse and all the things that sadly, you know, most of the MAGA movement probably wouldn't know if they experienced it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that we shift a little here. Project 2025 is much more than a 30-minute program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Much more. Actually, a 20-minute program <laughs> when you consider our introductory statement. Yes, sir. So 20 minutes will never give justice to talking about 2025. So you've given us a lot. Mm -hmm. You've given us a lot. And like I said earlier, that's only scratching the surface. But I want to shift to the school board and the races that we have upon us. Let's just shift. Because as you said, it's tied to 2025. But we have some serious issues. Yes, we do. Because we have three MAGA candidates running for our school board. I'm glad you mentioned Three MAGA candidates. And um, Glad you mentioned we need to make sure that the public knows this because mm -hmm. so they can slip in and the next thing we know is our superintendent is fired. Yeah. And then policies have shifted yes. towards the mega philosophies. So talk to us about the school board meetings you've gone to, as you've already said. And, I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. I mean, I would say that to all of your listeners, you know, just grab something to write with. <laughs> because um, as we know, 
Moms for Liberty has been an organization that, that was born in Florida, has become a nationwide organization. Their most important goal is to gain control of school boards. So their first step after they gain control and gain a majority is to fire the superintendent. So they have an avenue at the very local level to, to influence things like textbooks and curriculum standards. So we know we have two members on the board now for Moms for Liberty elected in 2022. As you said, Ray, we have three candidates running. We must back the three candidates that we are supporting. Yeah. Now we have one candidate who is district wide, right? District one is the entire county. Name That's the candidate. That is, Laura, that is Laura Hine. So if you're writing this down, Laura Hine, we're all going to vote for Laura Hine and we're back to our nodding, right? So Laura Hine. Vote for Laura Hine. That's, that's district one. <laughs> district four is Eileen Long. Now Eileen Long is an incumbent, right? 34 year teacher, strong union member, Mother, I had her son in my class at Dunning High School. Mm -hmm. Eileen Long is the candidate if you're in District 4. And then for District 5, Brad DeCorte is D-E-C-O-R-T-E, a 22-year teacher, also a union member, Brad DeCorte for District 5. So those are the candidates we're supporting because the consequences, we don't need to guess at. Moms for Liberty, when they've gained control in six other counties in the state, that's, that's their playbook. Five is superintendent and move from there. Well... Eileen Long, <laughs> DeCorte, and Hein. Thank you. Right on, right? To remember. Fast learner. All you need. <laughs> Hein is presently the chairman of the board. He is the chair. Yeah. So we got a lot to do here. We got a lot to do here. And this should be an hour long program. How many? Uh, yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, four minutes. Got four. Good. Okay. Um, Anything else you want to say about the school board races? I just want to say that August 20th is the election, right? Now, that's the primary, but for two of these three races, the primary is the general election because there's only two candidates. So please, August 20th, if you haven't already done it by mail, August 20th. Jamie, you wanted to talk to us yeah. about something dealing yeah. with the election. What the uh, the mail-in ballots. Um, people get your mail-in ballots filled out. Go ahead and fill that out to get it in. But for the ballots that people have already filled out and sent in early that had Biden on it, what are they going to do with the change with Kamala Harris? And this is my wife's question. You might have any answers for that. Just write it in. That That's it. Good. No, if it's already sent in. It's already sent in. But them being a, so that, that's, that's the conundrum. So people who've already sent it in. We're, we're in really good hands. I mean, I want to make sure I reassure our public that you know, our federal electoral system is rock solid. Elect uh, election fraud is almost non-existent. We have a very safe system. We have federal laws to ensure that if something like this happens, all Democrats in the country will get another ballot just for the presidential okay. election. Oh, yeah, so rest good. assured. Right. Yeah, rest assured. Yeah. Yeah. Good good question. Question. Yeah. Good question. yeah. And get them in, people. Fill them out. <laughs> get them in. Get them in. Don't wait till the last minute. Amen. Well, Who's <laughs> seriously leading the charge here in Pinellas County to get the Democrats energized, mobilized, organized? Who is it? I want to give your listeners something to have as good news to be reassured by. I think our county is actually a reflection of a lot of grassroots organizations and groups here in the county. I can't just credit the, the Democratic Party, although I can credit the Democratic Party at the state level, because for the first time, the Democratic Party at the state level, we fielded a candidate in every single election that's coming up. We can't feel the candidate, and that's tremendous progress. So the Democratic Party of the state is really well becoming well organized. And I think one of the reasons we're seeing Democratic parties around the country be well organized is simply because we've had to live with the fear mm -hmm. of another Donald Trump and the fear of a project 2025. And I say that with tremendous respect because, you know, once you understand what is really at stake and what's most important in this case is electing Kamala Harris as president, that translates into you being able to organize very effectively. So you don't have to deal with a lot of the infighting that might've happened locally and divided Democrats locally. We're much more organized. Look how quickly the country, all the Democrats in the country came together yeah, behind okay. Kamala Harris. And Look how quickly. Money started coming in. Right. So yeah. it's because we've lived the fear. I want to do a very quick summary, if you don't mind, please. Um, uh, Brad has Brad has given us a lot. He talked about the fact that Project 2025 is a blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's a blueprint. He mentioned that it was initiated by the Heritage Foundation mm -hmm. some years ago. 
He also said it's a 20, uh, what, a 920 page manifesto yes, sir. as to how the government should operate once a Republican or Donald Trump becomes president. And um, he also mentioned that the federal legislative branch of our government has 15 agencies mm -hmm. all under the supervision of the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can do what he wants, basically, yeah. with those branches. They want to uh, abolish the Department of Education. And he told us what they want to do with that. What what you what they want to name it, Brent? Brent, the Department of American Values. <laughs> okay, the Department of Stupidity. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. The permitting of mass roundup mm -hmm. of undocumented immigrants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How disruptive that would be to our economy, mm -hmm. to our workforce, and unfair to and the unfair. people. Yeah. Right. Just racist and. He want to end birthright citizenship. That's terrible. Uh, we can't let this happen. Right, right. We can put a stop to Project 2025 mm -hmm. in 2024. Right. That's right. <laughs> and, and like Russ said, yes, I already have the Supreme Court. I already got that right. now. <laughs> and with that being said, I want to thank Brent for being here. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. You I appreciate you. Great yep. job in yep. terms of sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. Russ, Jamie, thank you yeah, too for yeah. a job well done as always. Too we want to thank our listeners for tuning in to the Ray Tampa podcast on 99.1 FM, The Bird, and ask that you do so each and every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. And I want to say at this time, we really, really appreciate the opportunity to deliver these very important podcast Amen. on this radio station. Right. Amen. Good evening. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.